This is the start of a tutorial where we're gonna build out this Formula One app with the best component library out there, Material UI. Welcome to Defer, my name is Sam and today we're gonna build out a Formula One app. This is the first part of a tutorial where we're gonna check out Material UI, which is a component library. And in my opinion, the best component library out there in the React eco space. We're gonna learn how to use the grid, how to style components ourselves, and how to customize existing Material UI components. And this is not gonna be a follow along tutorial where we're gonna code side by side. This is more like a code review type of thing, which I think is way more time as efficient when we just have a look at the code instead of writing it out ourselves so we can get the most knowledge for the least amount of time. So in this episode, we will just look at Material UI. I'm gonna explain what it is and some of the things you might need to know before actually starting. So first, let's go to, through the pros and cons of Material UI. So the Material UI is a component library. That means we don't use actual vanilla CSS to style our things on the websites, our components on the website. We actually take in, we import different components that have already been built out by Material UI. So the pros of Material UI as a component library compared to other component library, it's, it has great theming. Um, so you can easily customize the different uh, components and the theming between these different components, how they look like, how they uh, look together look, uh, is very well done. So Material UI is based on Google's UI principle, which is called um, Material Design, which yeah, we're gonna see later how that actually looks like, but you can see it, uh, it's, everything just fits together. Then the other thing is it has great documentation. So whatever you need to find or whatever you need to do, generally the documentation that Material UI has is very, very well done. Um, it's also another thing, as I already mentioned, uh, it's very mature. So a big community has already formed around it. If there is an issue, it's most probably has already been solved in GitHub issues or in uh, Stack Overflow or where, uh, somewhere else. So that's very good, saves you a lot of time if you're developing and um, hitting a roadblock. And then it's just generally, it has great UX and uh, great accessibility as well. So you can see the components are very well designed. They're, um, they're mobile first. So usually the buttons, all of these input elements, they're very large. So you can easily hit them with your thumb, even if you're like um, very bad with like cell phones and stuff, it's very easy. So you don't have to worry about that as a designer or as somebody that does the UX, uh, UI, that's already handled kind of by Material UI. And then the next thing is it's server side render compatible. So in the year 2022 and beyond, we use way more server side rendered, especially with uh, frameworks like Next.js and um, not all of the component libraries are compatible with server-side rendering, where of course Material uh, UI is. Then one of the big cons, I already mentioned in the pros, that it's kind of opinionated. So you have these like the UX, UI accessibility is already done very nicely. Uh, also, it's based on Material Design, as I already said. That means it's very opinionated. But if you want to bring in your own things or if you're working in a company and your um, job is to create a, um, a design system, then if the design system is not very closely related to material design, then maybe uh, using the material UI library can be more of a hassle than anything else. I'm actually at the moment in such kind of project where I use a, a design system that we have from the designer and I customize the components from material UI. And sometimes it's quite of a hassle because it's it's quite opinionated, uh, the material design, material UI, but I have to say it's in a, in, in opinionated in a very good way. I think it really uh, goes mobile first. The inputs are big enough. The fields are big enough. Um, just generally, it's a very well built out material uh, or design library components, all of these things. So that's, that's very good, very well done. But especially if you have layouts that have like more small inputs that is more condensed, then material uh, UI sometimes hits kind of a roadblock there and it might be better to go with a different library. Then it's sometimes hard to, spe uh, to specifically design or customize styles inside of material UI. Material UI has a lot of nested components. So they have base components and build on top of that. 
and sometimes it's very hard kind of to figure out the selectors you need to use in the code to actually reach uh, down in these nested uh, fields uh, to be able to customize the components. Then compared to something like Chakra UI, which is an alternative, we're going to go into the, uh, what are the alternatives to Material UI just in a bit. It doesn't have a lot of utilities, so you have to write your state handling, your uh, UI handling, which is based on JavaScript. You have to write them most of the time yourself, which, as I said, in a library like Chakra UI, many of these things are already done. Then let's go into what are the alternatives to Material UI. The alternatives are something like React Bootstrap, Chakra UI, or even Ant Design. Um, they have different base design styles, I would say. But I still think, because I just went over that, what uh, component library we're going to use for our design system that we're building in my, at the company I'm working on, I still chose Material UI. It's, my opinion, by far the best, most mature um, component library out there that you can use in the React ecosystem. Um, yes, then let's go into a couple of components I want to show you. Uh, we're not going to go into all of the components. It's quite boring if I just go over the documentation. You can easily do that by yourself and I really encourage you to do that. But uh, I want to show you a couple of components that I think are interesting and, and uh, yeah, we're just going to have a look at that. So let's do that right now. So let's start with the first component. The first component is this paper component. Uh, this is kind of the base of not just Material UI as a library, but a Material Design in itself, where you have these different elevations. So usually things are in a grid, and if you want to have a non-flat design, so something that is more kind of 3D like this here, this is usually the component you will base all of your um, layout inside or the, like the cards and everything, all of the content will be inside of these papers. Um, yeah, that's pretty much everything uh, there is to say. They have the different elevations. Just wanted to show you that because that's pretty much the base of material, material design and material UI. Then this is the text field. This is the, the, the typical, the famous text field of material UI, which I think the UI is great. If you go in here, you can see there seems to be like a placeholder, but if you actually click on it, the placeholder becomes this label. I really love this UI. I think for, for many, many ways, this is the best UI you can build, or UX especially, you can build um, your text fields, your inputs. It also works the same for the select, so for the dropdowns. If you go here to the dropdown, so you see this kind of placeholder becomes the label. So this is typical Material UI. I think uh, that's, that's an amazing component. Then another thing that Material UI has is a huge library of different icons that you just can uh, bring in with an import statement, like the usual JavaScript import statement, and you can bring that in and just use it as a component. Um, it really works great. They have even different um, themes or styles, you would say, filled, outlined, uh, rounded, two-tone. So it's very good. You can also change inside of the code, of course, you can change the colors. So uh, it's uh, a great library, it uh, comes in very handy. Then this autocomplete component, which I think is great. Uh, so if you click in here, this is a list of, uh, of movies, for example, and you can get, go in and if you uh, search my favorite movie, The Godfather, you can see um, a component just works out of the box. And if you go here, See, this is an example of the great, um, the great documentation they have. You can see the code every time. You can see even the, how they did the, the handling of the state. You just put in the, the films or the movies here as the options and the, the components pretty much handles the rest. Then we have this stepper component here. We can use it in different ways. We have this uh, horizontal stepper. We, have, uh, we can even customize it to these things. So this will really upgrades the UI you have. Uh, and we have even this vertical stepper. That's the thing that we use in my company, for example. But one thing I didn't know for the longest time that we have this uh, carousel um, component here, which you can use if you don't know, building a, a good, true carousel component is not so easy. So that's a very good uh, carousel component you can use here. Then we go to the last component I want to show you, which is the state range picker. This is actually not in the, let's call it free version of Material UI. This is more uh, in the, uh, or this is uh, in the paid version, which is called MUI, uh, MUI, so Material UI X. 
which is with a license. The license is not uh, very expensive. So if you work in a team or if you work uh, in a professional company, I think it's uh, money very well spent. And this is just a day picker. If you ever had to design a day picker or code a day picker yourself, you know it's uh, extremely hard. Uh, so it saves you a ton of time if you just come in here uh, and have this um, date picker that works with great UX already out of the box. You can just import it and that's pretty much it. If you would want to build something yourself which is accessible, has great UX, you're going to spend easily two weeks just coding on that. Um, so yeah, that was the last component I wanted to show you. So that's pretty much it already for this video. In the next video, we're going to check out how to use the Material UI grid. After that, we're going to have a look into the styles and at the end, there will be the video where I'm going to show you what I did, some of the tips and tricks I can give you in combination how I built this Formula One app. So I hope to see you in the next video.